Yo dudes, it's Anna. I am out uh, mushroom hunting. Surprise, surprise. I have just happened to cross a lovely collection of Ario Boletus betula. This is a very common uh, bolete type mushroom. It is edible and pretty delicious. Um, unlike a lot of other bolete type mushrooms, it's pretty easy to identify. So if you're getting into the bolete game for the first time, uh, and you're in North Carolina, I highly recommend that you get to know this one. Uh, so I'm going to describe some of the key features uh, for it. This is a, a nice collection because they share uh, the few sort of deviations that this mushroom can have in terms of identi identification. So uh, first things first, the mushroom itself, uh, its common name is the shaggy stalked bolete. Uh, it gets a, that name and you can see it um, kind of faintly on this particular specimen, but they have uh, sort of a shaggy stalk that is made up of sort of an interlocking, um, you know, uh, sort of surface of uh, yellow flesh. And then underneath you see sort of a, a, a pinky stain. I'm going to see if I can uh, show you a slightly better version of the same thing. Okay, so here's a much larger specimen. Uh, that uh, particular feature of the shagginess is much more distinct. Sometimes you'll find these mushrooms and they're super shaggy. These are uh, a little more on the naked side. Uh, but that is one of the key features. Uh, like other bolete mushrooms, they do not have um, any gills. Instead of gills, uh, the spores come from a sponge. It kind of looks like uh, a whale's baleen if you open it up. Uh, I'm going to just split it in half here so I can show you. So basically, uh, the uh, spores of the mushroom develop in this uh, sort of, you know, um, spongy surface. And if you're into eating boletes, uh, sometimes the sponge you want to get rid of because they get very wet and they're kind of hard to cook. And uh, so you end up with something a little slushy and then uh, the rest of the mushroom, which is nice and firm and, firm and delicious. So um, besides having the shaggy stalk and having this uh, porous undersurface, uh, these mushrooms are also super duper tall. Like a lot of your boletes are short and fat and some of them like are more, um, I guess, proportional. So the cap and the stem uh, look like they kind of go together. In the case of Oreo boletus betula, you have a really, really long stem and a pretty dainty cap by way of comparison. So that is a really good uh, identification feature for them. Um, additionally, the uh, cap of the mushroom shares uh, a couple of color um, distinguishing features. They, like a lot of other boletes, do change color as they develop. So when they uh, pop up, they're usually kind of this reddish color. Uh, oftentimes they can be like bright cherry red when they're really fresh. But as they age, they take on this sort of uh, yellow color, oftentimes with red streaking. Uh, red streaking also like oftentimes that's where the mushroom is protected by, uh, you know, like leaves or forest stuff or whatever. Uh, so you get, you know, anywhere between this uh, reddish color, sometimes even brighter, to uh, sort of a lemony yellow. The other thing that's kind of cool, and uh, it's not super distinct on this specimen, but it's a good ID feature for the really fresh ones, not only does it have, uh, you know, a yellow porous uh, undersurface, it also has this narrow yellow uh, rim right around the edge. And uh, so that's really a good feature as well. On some specimens, it's not super distinct, like this one, uh, because the color is more in the orangey uh, sort of shade, it's a little more difficult. Uh, to discern. So anyway, those are the key features. Uh, the only other thing that I will uh, um, point out is that they have a monstrous uh, mycelial base of big, fat, white mycelium. And uh, while we're on the subject of picking mushrooms and digging them up, a couple of things. First, if you want to get mushrooms identified and you are a beginner, you have to collect the entire specimen. Uh, there are some mushrooms, especially ones that fall into that like dangerous shut down your liver territory. Uh, so the Amanita mushrooms, they have uh, a cup of uh, tissue at the base. It's, base. it's called a vulva. And so if you pick the mushroom, but you don't pick the vulva, then you're going to end up with an incomplete specimen, which makes it hard to identify. So if you're posting to a forum or showing a friend or what have you, you want to collect the whole thing. Um, also, 
there is a lot of conversation throughout mushroom world about whether or not it's okay to uh, pick mushrooms in their entirety and to pull up clumps of mycelium. And uh, I'm very confident that that's a totally fine practice and that nobody ought to worry about it. There is uh, a study that was conducted over the course of 30 years comparing harvesting techniques between uh, cutting mushrooms off at the base, not cutting or not harvesting mushrooms at all, and then harvesting mushrooms by plucking them. And there was no uh, difference over, again, that uh, period of years. The uh, only sort of differentiation year to year was the amount of rain. Um, also, if you're familiar with mushroom cultivation, one of the key things that you do uh, to make your mushrooms grow or make your mycelium grow is to disturb it. So, you know, you will be required to shake your stuff up a whole lot if you're interested in growing mushrooms. Wild mushrooms have some similar uh, characteristics. So basically, when you damage the mycelium, it responds by, uh, with a very, very strong self-healing response often. And so, um, you know, there is no, I don't think any current uh, research on actually plucking mushrooms, making your patch more vigorous, but there is uh, no reason to be concerned about, um, you know, plucking mushrooms and pulling them up, especially, again, in the case when you want to get someone to identify a mushroom, being able to say, oh, hey, this is a key feature. It's got this giant frickin' foot of mycelium. That is really helpful, uh, especially when you start to deal with mushrooms that are a little more ambiguous than this one. Um, Food-wise, this is a really good mushroom insofar as uh, it's kind of like sweet, a little bit citrusy, so it has kind of a nice, I don't know, uh, non-mushroom flavor, which is kind of cool, because at a certain point it's like, this mushroom is great, it tastes like mushrooms, that's fabulous, but it's kind of cool that this one um, is much more, you know, a flavor you'd pull out of the fruit bowl. Um, you do want to bear in mind that the sponge uh, underneath can sometimes be a little bit on the gooey side, especially when the mushroom starts to sporulate. Uh, so, you know, if you pick one of these, and actually this oldest one is a good example, the sponge is definitely starting to get a little bit on the uh, rugged side. So when I eat it, I'm just going to pull it right, pull it right off. And so you'll see, you know, there's plenty of, plenty of cap left and it's just a matter of uh, pulling it off like a wet sock or something equally disgusting. So yeah, Areobolita spatula. Um, it has other names in circulation, but that is the current name. So you'll see Hymiopora spatula, Bolita spatula. If you go to Mushroom Observer, there's a long list of synonyms that this mushroom has been known by, but uh, Oreobolitis is where it lives, at least for now.